Hi everyone, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn. Um, it's with our own Nella. Um, so she's going to be talking about the digital marketing essentials um, and just like basic overview to it. Um, so if anyone has any questions about Republic of Work, as usual, I leave my email address in the chat. Feel free to pop me an email. Um, at the end of this session, I'll be popping a quick link into the chat box as well. If you guys could fill that out for us and you have the chance to get yourself a free day pass as well at the end of it once you have that filled out. Um, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop me an email. So I'll pass you over to Nana now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, let's go back for a second. So yeah, my name is Nena. Um, so I'm the senior marketing executive here in Republic of Work. Um, so I've actually only been here for around a month, but they've already got me doing one of these lunch and learns. So um, these are really great, actually. Um, we do them on all kind of different topics. Um, even since I've been here, we've had stuff on investing. Um, I think there was um, another one. I can't remember what it was, but there's lots of different um, topics. So these happen weekly. Um, and now that restrictions have lifted as well, we're definitely going to be having um, holding different kind of events um, throughout the year. So if you're not on our newsletter list already, definitely make sure to sign up for that. Um, but today we're going to be going over digital marketing essentials, kind of a starter's guide. So it's not going to be anything too um, specific or too detailed, um, just kind of the things that I was thinking would be helpful if you were someone who was just um, starting to dip your feet in um, the whole digital marketing space. Um, digital marketing obviously can get quite complicated if you want to go down that way but um, today we're just going to keep it a bit more simple um, and just go over kind of the bigger areas that um, are good to start off with. So um, just in case people don't know already um, a definition from HubSpot is that digital marketing encompasses all marketing efforts that use an electronic device or the internet. Um, so it can be a whole range of things obviously um, in the past like 20, 15 years, everything has kind of moved online and technology has just been um, expanding at such a crazy rate that all the traditional media, obviously it still happens, but it's just not as um, useful for current companies. Um, and digital marketing is just a much more easier and quicker way to get your brand and business online. Um, so businesses obviously can leverage all these different digital chan channels um, like search engines. So your Google, your Yahoo, Bing, all those kind of things. Social media, we all know social media, so all the different types, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, email, and then other websites as well. So you can connect with your current and prospective customers. Um, if you want to be successful online today, really probably you do need to have um, a digital presence and, and a strong digital presence at that. Um, just because the internet business and marketing um, has never been um, this competitive. Um, so you need to, the first, a first step would be to try and create a digital marketing plan that will suit your business. Um, and then once you have that, it will really help your um, business expand and grow. Um, people spend so much time online at the minute, you know, so like if someone is gonna be searching for a new product or service, you know, the first thing they're gonna do realistically for the majority of people anyway, is they're just gonna do a Google search. So, you know, that's where you need to be. Um, if you are someone who doesn't have any digital marketing presence or anything like that at the minute, your competitors, your competitors probably do. So that's um, another reason why you really need to get on the bandwagon as soon as you can. Um, and you also have the potential to, you know, compete with even larger corporations, um, you know, because you can do a lot with a little when it comes to digital marketing. So even if you're just a small little startup or a small little business, um, you do have potential to, you know, compete um, for leads with other other bigger companies. Um, so the benefit, main benefits of digital marketing, I feel would be that it's measurable, affordable, speed, it's quick and engagement. So um, measurability wise, um, you're able to monitor and, change things um as you wish uh, a lot of the digital platforms now will have like inbuilt analytics so you're able to see what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis you're able to get you know real-time information about what's working what isn't like if you run a certain campaign you're able to see pretty quickly if it's getting through to the right people and if you're sending the right message 
um, and you're able to like circle back or change your strategy um, just by looking at all the reports and analytics that are really available to you. Um, so it's also quite affordable. Obviously, it depends on your business or your startup or anything. You either, you could have a little bit of a budget, you could have a huge budget, you might have no budget at all. Um, you can still do a lot of marketing, do the marketing, whether you have no money or whether you have a lot of money to spare. Um, you know, small and medium sized businesses are now able to move a lot of their uh, marketing online as in because it's just so much cheaper it's a fraction of cost of what traditional media would have cost um and you're also able to get get data from all like from all the advertising that you would do you're able to get that data back and, and you'll be able to see the feedback and see if it was good or not and see if it was like a good way of spending your money um so the speed of which you can do digital marketing is really handy as well um you're able to get your message out there so quickly if something relevant in your, in your industry happens you know you could have an email sent within a couple of hours even less an hour you could have a post up um depending on the size of your team you know you could have even a whole campaign done in a matter of hours if it's something that is relevant to you and you need to get it out there quickly um you know it's just the click of a button really um and that's just so different compared to you know back in the day well, not back in the day, but like if you want to get something out in a newspaper, you know, it's going to take, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or, you know, if you're having stuff printed, you know, on like a bus stop or whatever, all this takes a lot of time. So you can't be um, as like agile or whatever with your messaging. Um, and the fourth benefit, I think, is the engagement. Um, that's probably one of the bigger, uh, one of the bigger things about digital marketing. Um, you're really able to see um how your company is engaging with your your current customers and their prospective customers um being able to like answer questions or like resolve issues uh online and quickly is so beneficial i think people really appreciate that um you know if something goes wrong with like your product or your service and you know address it online really quickly i think people Read, people find that really um, helpful and they they trust you more as a brand when you can get that out there quickly to them and people also will definitely engage with that as well um, and you can just reach a much much uh, wider audience in general um, with digital marketing which means you can do more than you know just constantly sell your product you can also you know start telling your story um, and yeah just bringing different elements of your um different elements of your business to you know customers and potential customers um so what I'm going to go through today is just the six things you have here so knowing your audience social media email marketing content creation SEO and analytics there's obviously a lot more um to digital marketing than the six here but I just thought these were um six kind of simpler ones that I could touch on um just in, in you know briefly um obviously it's really important to have like a, a good website you know a, you know nicely designed simple to use um like if you don't have a good website that's probably the first thing you need to get on just because you know if, if someone hops on your website and it's taking ages to load or you know things are all out of whack you know they're just going to hop off straight away and go to the next one um there's obviously also a lot of planning that needs to be involved with digital marketing um that, that's just you know taking the time to sit down and really think about um you know what your goals are um, and then there's a lot more specific things, you know, like influencer marketing. So there's lots of different elements, but we're just going to be covering um, these six ones here today. So the first is, um, yeah, the first thing that is important is knowing your audience. Uh, so you could, you know, you could have loads of ideas and you can have loads of plans and, you know, you could have, you know, really good like designs and everything and really great ideas but if you don't actually know who your audience is and you put all these different campaigns out there it just mightn't work and you're not going to see like any return on it um you need to really make sure that you know who you actually want to use your product or your service um so yeah just defining your target market um you need to define your target market your goals and if you have a unique selling point there you need to decide that from the get-go because it will just you know set you up for success um you know along with that you need to like determine what you actually want to achieve so like is it brand awareness is it like website conversions 
um, like is it Instagram followers, lots of different things. Um, once you have your goal set, that will really help help your longer term strategy. Um, so you can to like hopefully you know who your target market is. Obviously, depending on what it is you're selling, it could be you could have multiple um, different audiences, or you could have one very specific audience. But um, creating personas is something that would help. Um, so creating a persona would just mean um, listing maybe three or four um, identities that you know you think are the kind of people you want to use your service or product. Um, so you'd want to be kind of as specific as you can. You know, you know what age are they? What background are they? Um, you know, what are their needs? What do they want? What challenges do they have? Um, so yeah, even if you could just have maybe three or four personas and then that helps with your marketing because you can create different campaigns and different um different things to suit each of those different uh personas um doing some market research and industry research research will really help as well um just because it's always good to know what's going on within your industry because obviously things change so fast these days um, and then it's also important to make revisions because obviously over time things can change um, and it's always good to just be optimizing any uh, any basic research you have done in the first place. Um, knowing your audience um, better just knows that you're going to be you, the stuff you're, you know that the stuff you're selling is going to be reaching the right people because the worst thing that you can do is spend so much time and effort um, doing campaigns and then it just like not reaching the right people so yeah it's super important to just define your target market your goals and then um any unique selling points you have as well so that would be your audience uh so the next topic would be social media so we all know about social media um, i don't think i need to explain too much about what it is um i think there's something like i think four billion people or something using social media at the minute so it's super, super important. Um, if there's that many people using social media, there's going to be that many people engaging with different brands. Um, so it's really important to have a good social media presence because it kind of illegitimizes your brand and, um, you know, makes you feel a bit more uh, personal and um, just being somewhat active in line helps um users see oh look this person is taking the time out you know connect with the customers um and people would tend to trust an active brand rather than one who's quite inactive um you don't need to be on every single social media obviously depending on your business or um you can this again goes back to what goals you have so you know for some people you might just want to be on linkedin you know, if you're more um, kind of corporate or professional focused um, for others, you might only be on, you know, Instagram. If you're like real visual, like it may be like, I don't know, it could be a cafe business or something. You might only be on Instagram because a lot of your stuff is visual. So it really depends. Um, the last thing you want to do is like try get on every single social media platform, but have no time to do any of them properly. Um, so it's just down to a matter of, yeah, again, going back to your goals and seeing what you actually want to achieve um and then from there you can work on you know how often you want to be posting um and all the things like that obviously for social media you can do organic posts which is just you know writing things yourself there's no paid behind it but then you also have the sector of um paid ads i'm not gonna go too into that today just because that is a whole thing of itself but paid ads are if you have the budget um, and even if you do have a very small budget, you can still get a lot done with paid ads. Um, they're great because, you know, you can really target very, very specific sectors of people. Um, all the ad platforms like LinkedIn and Facebook, you know, you can target very, very specific people. So, um, you know, you're going to be re reaching the right, um, your right audience. And you can also create ads for certain goals. So, like, if your goal is you just want people to know about your brand, you can click that and you know, I want a brand awareness um, campaign or else you can do it to drive traffic to your website um, lots of different ways so definitely um, if you do want to learn more about that um, I would say specifically Facebook and LinkedIn the ad platforms are really quite easy to use and they're quite user-friendly 
Um, and again, if you're worried about budget or anything like that, you can be able to set your budget, you know, even if it's just five euro a day, um, it can all be very specific. So, you know, you're not, um, you're not going to be spending loads of crazy money. Um, but overall, social media, it's just really good for fostering relationships, ones that are already there with your own customer base and then obviously with prospect, prospects as well. Um, it's great if you can show a more social side of your business. So it's not just all, it's not just all serious business all the time. You know, you can show your, your team or your staff or, you know, if you have outings, um, you know, if you have cute little dogs or anything like that, people just love seeing, you know, a friendlier side of business as well. Um, it's great for reputation management. So obviously time to time people, you know, you might get a, a negative review or anything like that, but the best thing you can do is, if there is a negative review on like one of your public platforms, it's best just to, you know, respond to them with empathy and, you know, try and figure out what the issue is. Um, and even if people see that, you know, that's, that, that helps a lot. You can, people can tell that you're not just like ignoring or deleting like comments like that. Um, you're just trying to, you know, get to the, what the issue is. Um, and then obviously social is great for generating leads and boosting conversions, um, which is, what most people want at the end of the day as well so yeah LinkedIn Instagram TikTok Facebook YouTube there's plenty of different socials um it's probably just down to your own um to yourself to decide which ones or which ones will work for you um so next is email marketing uh so a lot of people seem to think well would maybe some people think that email marketing is not as um effective as it was back in the day but uh, email marketing is probably still one of the one of the higher um, conversion rates of all the different marketing efforts. Um, you know, it really allows you to build relationships with your current customers and then also with prospects too, and even ex customers. Um, you know, any email you're sending is hopefully going directly into their inbox. You know, at a time that suits them. Um, and once you have the right messaging and everything, um, it, that can be really, really impactful. Um, you know, there's lots of different ways you can use email marketing, whether that's like sending a newsletter, if it's sending, you know, different, um, um, different events that are happening, uh, announcements or just general updates about your company. Um, it's just a nice little way of like telling a story and keeping whoever's interested, um, updated on, on what's going on. Um, you can also, you know, offer like discounts and stuff within your email marketing um you know if you have a website or if you're in the process of like creating your own, your own website it's really important to have you know an option to sign up to the newsletter um just because it's another way of uh, reaching those people and um, keeping in that regular contact so you know you kind of keep top of mind um and people are more likely to engage um if someone's on your email list and you're sending them you know regular enough emails but not too regular they're much more likely to engage with you and become um, a repeat customer um one thing about emailing is it's good to make sure you're only emailing emailing people like if you have a big email list or even if you have a small email list it's good to try and segment your email list down to make sure you're only emailing certain people things that they actually want to hear about so you know you don't want to be emailing someone something that has absolutely nothing to do them because that's where you're going to get your unsubscribes and people disengaging um, with your newsletters and stuff. Um, so there's lots of different email um, email platforms you can use. Obviously you can, if you have a smaller list, you could just use like standard email um, platforms like Gmail or Yahoo. Um, but if you want to actually use a bigger email um, email platform, uh, MailChimp, HubSpot and Dot Digital, they're all really good kind of um, somewhat beginner ones um they would have more experience sections as well but they're all very good if you if you haven't used it before um you know and they have tutorials of how how to use them um and like the main factors of an email is just to make sure that it looks you know it looks nice it's designed well it flows um properly you know leading down you know start with the intro and lead down to cta so just a call to action of what you actually want that person to do um, and as long as you're, you know, not spamming and not sending too many emails, people generally do appreciate being updated about what's going on if it's a company um, they're interested in. So the next um, element would be content. So content could be anything that you're creating. Um, 
when you do create content, you're providing, you know, free and really useful information to your audience. Um, so you're able to attract new people, um, but then you're also retaining um, existing customers as well. Um, content marketing or content or creating content is really helpful because, you know, you're offering really useful and informative material um, that people need when they're doing research about um, whatever product or service they want. So, you know, it helps move customers along the journey, um, their customer journey. So if someone is in that research phase and they're Googling, you know, whatever it is, um, and they come across a blog of yours, um, you know, that's such a way to get them into your brand to start um, knowing about your brand and stuff. And then that can also happen at different stages of the journey. So even when they're considering, you know, a few different options, if you have like a good infographic or a good podcast about your product, again, that pulls them in even more. And then when they're at the decision stage as well, um, you know, there's other things you can offer them. Um, like, you know, like a one-to-one -one call when you're with a sales or for whoever. Um, and then that'll just pull them in even more. So it's good to try and um, try and attract them at every single stage. Um, I suppose content is mostly seen as a lead generation tool, but like it's also, it will help with brand awareness. It will help with your sales. It'll help, you know, it'll reach um, a much wider audience. Um, and it's also just good for ed ed education um and it will build relationships as well and help to create a sense of community with your brand um so there's lots of different things you can do for content you could write a blog you create a videos you know videos of anything like just your day-to-day -day or you know if you work in an interesting place anything at all um infographics you know if you might maybe if you have like a bit of a complicated um complicated product you know having a nicely designed infographic to kind of break it down for people will be really helpful um podcast we actually have a podcast studio here in Republic of Work so uh, we find that people love using that as well um you know pop, podcasts can be re repurposed as well into videos or you can even do it into a blog so there's endless um ways you can create content and use it um for your for your company um so yeah content marketing probably does it's one of the more time consuming ones but it definitely is very very helpful and it's great for SEO, which is the next topic that I'll talk about. Um, so it's great for just bringing people onto your website, which is really important at the end of the day, because that's where you want people to be. So yeah, so the next is SEO. Um, and so for anyone who doesn't know, SEO is uh, stands for Search Engine Optimization. So it's a set of practices designed to improve the appearance and positioning of web pages in organic search results. Um, so obviously you, most of you have seen on Google, there's lots of Google ads and everything. So that's people, that's what people are paying to appear, uh, uh, on the first three or four, uh, results on a search engine. And then sometimes at the bottom as well, but SEO is relating to the more organic results. Um, so this is something that you can do, um, you know, freely, it doesn't cost money. Um, Basically, it just improves your website's ranking on, you know, on Google and on all the different search engines. And it makes your website more visible um, to an audience who's searching for you. So, for example, for Republic of Work, you know, if someone was searching Cork or co-working in Cork City or hot desk in Cork City, we would want to be appearing very high on that list, um, which would mean that our SEO is, you know, up to scratch because, we have lots of like keywords and backlinks like relating to co-working and all everything in that kind of industry um so seo it's really good for yeah driving website traffic to your to your page um obviously increases brand awareness um it is definitely something that is uh, a long-term strategy it's not something that you can just do overnight um google is also constantly changing um how like what works for SEO and what doesn't so it's something that um it's definitely it's something that's a learning curve and if you are interested in that kind of thing I would definitely say go and research it because it, it is interesting but it can get it can get very technical as well as in bigger companies you know they'd have their own SEO specialists and stuff like that um but it's definitely really really useful because you know if someone's searching for your industry you do really want to be on that first page because I, I don't know the exact stat, but like it's very, very low the amount of people that even go to the second page of Google results or any search engine results. 
Um, so like regular regular blogging is a great way to um, improve your SEO over time, um, which would mean just writing about relevant topics in your industry, um, including relevant keywords within that blog, um, having people guest blog on your website and you guest blogging on other people's websites um, and having people link back to your website as well is really, um, really helpful for SEO. Um, also, uh, how your general website works is really important. Um, just the overall user experience is really is important for SEO. So there is a few different elements, um, but uh, definitely something to spend a little time in if you can. Um, some websites that I've listed there are Moz, um, SEMrush and Google Search Console. They're all really good for um, finding keywords that are going to be relevant to your business um, and also just gives you lots of different SEO tips and updates um, because, as I said, Google's um, algorithm changes quite a lot. So uh, one week it could be something else and then, you know, a couple of months later it could be something different. So it's just something that you'd need to keep on top of as well. So the last part would be um, analytics. So analytics are good for basis understanding um, your performance as a company. Um, it helps with creating, you know, just strategies and plans going forward. And it really helps you connect with your customers. Um, you can use a variety of different analytic platforms like Google Analytics would probably be the biggest one. Um, Hotjar is an is example of one as well, where you can kind of see a heat map of where people click on your website. And then obviously LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook, they all will have their own analytics built into the platform. So you can go and look at that as well. Um, it's really good for, you know, seeing what has happened in the past, uh, what might have worked and what doesn't work. Um, you can see what's currently happen happening. So in analytics, it's, you know, it's in real time. So if I was to go onto Google Analytics right now, I could see like who's on the Republic of Work um, website. I could see, where they came from. I can see if they were on a desktop or a mobile. Um, I can see where in the world they are. So you can get so much information, which obviously helps with, um, with your planning and with your strategy and you know, with how you want to promote your, your, um, your business. Um, it can also help predicting what might happen. You know, if you start, if you do start examining your reports um, over time, once you have built up um, a good amount of data, you can probably start to see patterns and you could, you know, start to predict what customers might be interested in the future um, and stuff like that. And then you can also just, it helps you to optimize. So you can just be optimizing, optimizing different campaigns, optimizing parts of your website um, and yeah, all that kind of stuff as well. So it's really, analytics is definitely like an invaluable part of a digital marketing strategy um, because if you do, all these different campaigns and you know start if you're sharing stuff on social um but then you don't have any data to see back on it you know you, you'd kind of be lost so that's why analytics is really really important um you know you can probably you can be a bit more proactive and um proactive and effective with different campaigns in the future um and it'll help you um just engage with your customers in real time and make sure you're not um you're not wasting um, too much resource and energy on maybe campaigns and um, different different digital marketing efforts that um, you know that just might be working working for your company um, yeah so I think that is it for um, the analytics so overall it's just if you can try and combine those six um, those six elements of digital marketing and then obviously always be like working on your website and just making sure everything looks well obviously digital marketing is such a visual it's such a visual thing um it's definitely um a process that gets better over time um and you do once you get the hang of it it's not it's not something that's too scary I know if you don't have any idea about digital marketing you might be thinking it looks all crazy and it, it might be very overwhelming but it's just like everything else if you start small and have a good plan you should be able to really help grow your brand or grow your business. Um, and yeah, anyone should be able to do it as well with a bit of help. There's lots of um, information online. You know, if you ever want to learn more about SEO or even Google Analytics, they will always have their own internal um, tutorials as well. 
So that's all from me for today. If you do have any questions, you can let me know. Um, and definitely you can email me on my Republic of Work email. And if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing here in Republic of Work, um, we're hoping this year will be super exciting now that we have a bit more freedom with restrictions gone um, for cool events we'll be having. Um, yeah, you can reach me there.